Hi there. Today we're going to take a photograph of a t-shirt and turn it into a mock-up that you can apply different patterns and designs to uh, to make a very realistic colorful t-shirt. Great for uh, doing custom design work. I make uh, custom sportswear so I use a lot of these mock-ups. Some of them I've created myself, some I've bought. But I really enjoy making them and I like the process so I want to share that with you today. So this t-shirt picture is actually a image that I got off of a site called freepick.com. So freepick.com, there's some premium images, there's some free images. I have an account with them, but uh, I just didn't log in. I just wanted to find that really quickly. So I did download this file. It comes in two versions. It comes in a JPEG fo uh, format, which has the words, unfortunately, embedded into the picture. And it also has a Photoshop version, which is uh, actually a mock-up in itself. It's not as detailed a mock-up as I like to make. Uh, so that's why I flattened the image and took away all the mock-up characteristics of the file. And now I'm going to show you how I turn that into an editable mock-up. So you can see that I've cropped out the front version of the shirt. You can see that I only have one layer and I've changed it from a background layer to an editable layer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just duplicate this because I want to keep that layer. Uh, duplicate layer. Okay. Now we're going to find the channels. We're going to turn, we're going to actually lock layer one. We're going to put a lock on that, and we're going to select layer zero copy. We're going to go into channels, and we're going to find the one with the most contrast, because that's going to make it really easier for us to separate this shirt into the sections that we need. The first thing we need to do is just select the shirt. No man, no pants, no background, just the shirt. So that's what we're going to start to do right now. It's the first step. So we'll turn off the color layer, if we can. Hmm. That looks pretty good for selecting. Let's see. That's a little bright. It's also a little bright. Mm. Let's add an adjustment layer. Let's go back to layers. I'm going to add adjustment layer. We're going to choose the um, brightness contrast. So we've selected this layer, so it's going to apply it to everything underneath that, all layers underneath that. But if you click in here, the little sun here, which stands for brightness contrast, it's going to open up a little uh, window here. I got mine hid away, of course, because I got so many things open. Let me just close something here. pop this out so we can make it smaller and that way we can get rid of the rest of this. The only thing we need here is layers. Oops. Let's just slide this stuff over right away. Okay. So this is our brightness contrast layer. Um, whoa. Color burn. That should work. So right up here in your, oops, um, color burn. Yeah, we should be able to use that to get to separate it. So what we're going to use here for this is our magnetic lasso tool because we just want the shirt, not any part of that guy. Here's our magnetic lasso tool. Just click on that. 
Let's zoom in a little bit. It's showing 16.7%. Now we want at least 60%. So we just hit our control plus until we get it up to 66.7. So this should make it real easy for us to find the edges of this shirt and eliminate what we don't want. So let's start right about here. So what we're going to do is just drag the cursor down along the edge that you want to separate. Uh, I think we went a little bit too far. If you go too far, just move your mouse up past the point that you want to delete. And just hit your delete key. And it'll take those points right out. Okay, so we're going for the edge of the shirt, not for the edge of the arm. Okay, so you can't use your wheel on your mouse or anything to navigate around this image yet. What you have to do is just drag your pointer down to the bottom and it'll it'll send it up for you. It'll okay. So we found the bottom of the shirt. So if we keep going down, we can get rid of those points afterwards. It's very easy. All you do is just drag your cursor up above the point that you wanted to delete. So you just delete as many points as you want. So back where you goofed up, I guess. Okay, so now we just go, keep going, keep going. I love this magnetic lasso tool. Now I got these little windows open here. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. What we can do is just go over, 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 over onto our bar with our slider here. And just go back and hit your delete key. Delete, 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 delete. Just keep following it back and it'll keep deleting the mock there for you. So we're doing pretty good at finding these edges to make this selection. So if we hadn't found the um, correct brightness level and the cor correct blend mode this would not be this easy this makes the edges pop out a bit more so see we're getting to the end now we're going to have to drag this right up to the top and keep it uh, up at the top and it'll slide the image down for us and you see as it's going is finding most of the edges as it's going which is great we've got to this point now it's goofed up a little that's okay we just want to get this down a little bit and then we can go back and correct it and keep going. Okay. Now I made a lot of points that I got to get rid of. So just hit your delete key and just keep moving your mouse pointer or your cursor back towards the ones where you want to delete. Okay. So we're back where we need to be. Oops. Went off course there a little bit. We don't want that. When, if it does that, it's finding uh, differences in the in the stuff that we want to get rid of, and we don't want it out there. So what you do is just make little small points. You can click the button to put points in there as well. Okay. So you just keep dragging it through. This is the most boring part. Please bear with me, and it'll get a lot more interesting. I guarantee you. Oh, let's see. So we want to click on the edge of the shirt here. Oh, see, there's not as much contrast here now. So we, what we can do is we can just leave that part there, and we can get rid of that afterwards using the um, curvature pen tool. So this this mag ah, shoot this magnetic lasso tool works really well when there's well defined edges. Curvature pin tool is more, I find it better when the edges are not as defined and I gotta go pick my way through and make a path of my own. <clears throat> this should be fairly easy to get this edge because it's such a huge contrast.
So we found our way back to the beginning. I think it worked out pretty well. So when you click on the beginning point at the end of your selection, it turns itself into a selection. So what we can do now is zoom this back out. So you can see that just the t-shirt is selected with the exception of this little uh, goof up that we had here. So now, you, now that you got your selection made, you can turn, you can get rid of this uh, brightness and contrast layer. So just by choosing it, hitting your delete garbage can at the bottom there. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to copy that what we have selected there and paste to a new layer. So just hit your control C. Uh, whenever you're pasting, uh, you can hit Control V, but a lot of times that'll move it over to the right a little bit or not place it exactly where it was on the original. So what you do to get it to go exactly where it was on the original is hit your Control Shift V. So let's see what we have here. We're going to turn off the visibility on both of these layers to see what we're left with. And we're left with just a t-shirt and just this little area here that needs to go. So we can delete layer zero copy. We can turn the visibility off on this. Then we can just zoom in and Concentrate on this section. So we need to get rid of this beige part. So let's just get our curvature pen tool here. Because we kind of got to eyeball this. So let's zoom in a little bit more. We're at 50%. Now let's zoom it into 100%. So when you're using curvature pen tool, click in a transparent area and then gradually make your way into the area that you want to work with. So you can see there's a very slight difference there in the color. That's why the magnetic didn't pick it up. So we're going to go as close as possible here. And just select around that in the transparent area. When you get back to the beginning, it makes the closes the loop, let's say. So then we just right click on one of these points and say make selection, feather of zero, and we're going to make sure our correct layer is selected here, which is this one, and hit delete. So there you have it. You have your perfectly cut out t-shirt. So let's zoom out again and have another look. And there you go. That one's kind of long, as it was on a man, pretty obviously. Uh, I'd like to shorten that up and make it for a lady. So what we're going to do, go back to our layer one, hit Control T, and we're just going to shorten this up a little bit, just by uh, dragging this handle up. Now, uh, proportionate is set on this, which means that whenever you size resize width, the height will resize in proportion to the change that you made in the width. With this little linkage button here, you can click that on or off. But now that it's off, I can just grab this handle and drag this up a little bit. Now, this looks more like a lady shirt to me. So we'll just uh, apply that transformation. Okay, so this is all we're working with now. So the layer with the, the man in it, we can just get rid of that. So unlock it. Click it, hit your garbage can, and it's gone. So all we're left to work with now is just a t-shirt. So now that we have the t-shirt, we're going to make a couple copies of this. I'm just going to click on this one. I'm going to hit right click and duplicate layer and 
call it layer well it's already called layer one copy do it again uh, duplicate layer okay so now you have three copies of this uh, this layer with the t-shirt on it so we're only going to work with the top one we're going to lock the other two so select it hit control shift select the second one at the bottom here and we're going to hit our lock button so these are not going to move so we're just going to turn the visibility off on these and now we got to separate out the different parts of the shirt which are the collar the uh, right sleeve and the left sleeve so let's zoom her in again now for this you're definitely going to use your curvature pen tool because your magnetic lasso tool is not going to pick up these edges pretty much guarantee it So just make sure you've got your working layer selected. Uh, let's just double click on this and call it working layer. Okay. So make sure that one's selected. So what we got to do now is cut out the sleeve with the curvature pen tool. So just click in the transparent area. Uh, go into your garment and just uh, gradually Click your way up through where you can see the seam so where there's an obvious difference but separates the body of the shirt from the sleeve of the shirt. It's hard to see. We could have turned the um, contrast up a bit but I can see it well enough to do this. Some places hardly a line there at all, but you just imagine where the line is. So when you get up here, the line is a little bit more pronounced, so it's easier to find. Okay, so you're outside of the uh, garment area now into the transparent area. So you can just click your way down and right back to your beginning point. So when you hit the beginning point, you see that all the points on the line are highlighted. So just right click on it say make selection okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to make another layer and that's going to be our left sleeve you don't have to physically create a new layer you're just going to make sure your working layer is selected you're going to hit control c control shift v and that pastes a new layer with your sleeve on it. So if you turn off your working layer's visibility, you can see that all you're left with there is the sleeve. So we're going to rename that layer left sleeve. Okay, and we're going to go back to our working layer again. And we're going to scroll over. We're going to get our right sleeve. This one should be a little bit easier because the line here is very well pronounced. So click in your transparent area with your curvature pen tool. And again, just trace your way. Oops. This was actually a corner. Whenever there's a corner, you just double double click on the point and it indicates that it's a sharp corner. Same as right here. This is kind of a corner as well. So we're just going to double click in here and that tells it to start with the curve from that point on so anytime that you see that is not right on the line you can uh, just move it around move it back move it forward and just keep on going like that until you get the whole seam selected Now this one is not right on the line. Just move it back a little bit. And keep going. Now that you're in the transparent area again, just click around the outside of the sleeve. 
Now that they're all selected, you can right click, say make selection, feather of one. Okay, so you see that now you have selection here. So you're still on your working layer. You're going to hit control, uh, control C and then hit control shift V and that post paste the right sleeve as a new layer. So we're going to turn off the working layer and you can see that you got your right sleeve there as well. So we're going to rename that layer as well. Now we're going to call that right sleeve. Okay. Turn your working layer back on. Select it. Go up. Now we need to get the neckband. So we're at 50% uh, zoom there now. We're going to zoom in to at least 100. There we go. We're at 100%. Now, this, the seam lines are visible there. We're just going to try and use this curvature pen tool to get exactly right on that seam. And that would be the seam where the collar is sewn onto the shirt. your selection feather of one hit OK now again hit control C to copy that selection control shift V to paste the selection in the exact same spot okay turn off your working layer and you get your collar so if you zoom out you got left sleeve right sleeve and collar we don't have the body yet, but I'll show you how to get that now. So, for each of these layer, oh, we got to rename this layer. We're gonna call it collar. Okay. So for each of these three layers, we're gonna add a mask. We're just gonna go in and right click, select pixels, and we're gonna add a mask to that. Right click select pixels and add the mask and for the left sleeve we'll do the same right click select pixels add mask so now that we got these three masks it should be really easily to, to separate the body of the shirt so we're going to turn this working layer visibility on again we're going to hit the little thumbnail there next to the layer hit select pixels and we're going to add a mask to that as well so you can see on the mask that it is the entire shape of the shirt so what we need to do now is get the selections from these other masks subtract it from this and that'll leave us with the body of the shirt so on your mask layer just right click say add mask to selection and it selects the whole entire shirt so now just right click on the collar mask with this still selected right click we're going to say subtract mask from selection so you see it takes the collar off the mask and do the same with the right sleeve subtract from selection and same with the left sleeve subtract from selection so what you're left with is a selection of just the body of the shirt. So to get that applied to this shirt layer here, we're just going to make sure we're on our working layer. We're going to hit Control C, Control Shift V. And that's the body of the shirt. So we're going to right click, select pixels and add the mask. We can delete the mask from this, our working layer, we can delete that mask. So 
So now we have the body, the collar, the right sleeve, and the left sleeve separated. So just double click on the caption for that layer and we're going to call that body. Or we can call it back. Because ideally, ideally we will be doing both the front and the back. The next step in making the mock-up is we have to make each layer a smart object. So to do that, we're going to start with the back. We're going to click on the back layer, right click, duplicate layer. Okay. So we got back copy. Just double click on that. We don't want it called back copy. We want it just called back. And we're going to right click on the mask delete the mask and now we just have the selection with no mask we're going to right click on that and we're going to convert to smart object now we can slide this mask up onto that layer and we can get rid of the previous layer called back just hit delete and that's gone so we're going to repeat that step for each of these uh, other three sections so we're going to duplicate the collar. So just right click on the layer, hit duplicate layer. Uh, in here it says as collar copy. So we don't want to copy, we just take copy out. So as collar. Okay. So you can see that the second one that we just made has a mask. Right click, delete the mask, and convert to smart object. We don't want to create a smart object with a mask applied because then when you go into your uh, file where you add your design it'll have a mask included we don't want that we want the mask on the main on the main document so on the first layer called collar we just slide that mask up and we'll right click on the first collar layer and hit delete okay so that's two so we're going to do the same thing with right sleeve so we're going to right click duplicate Take out copy, delete, say OK. So we got two layers called right sleeve. So on the top one, we delete the mask, right click, convert to smart object, and slide the mask up. Delete this layer, delete. Because you only want one that's a smart object with a mask for each different section. So the last one to do here is left sleeve. We're going to duplicate that. Duplicate layer. Okay, left sleeve copy. Take out the copy. Left sleeve. So now we have two layers named left sleeve. Delete the mask. Right click. Convert to smart object. And slide the mask up. Delete the original left sleeve layer. And there you have it. You have your four layers for your four different parts of the shirt. So there's a couple more steps here, but I'm not going to show you those until we add a design to this shirt. And then I'll show you what the other two layers are for. So now we got to add some kind of design to this. So as I said before, I design custom sportswear. So we're just going to go into our Adobe Illustrator here and get uh, one of the things that I've designed. This is a pool league shirt. We're just going to zoom in on that so you can see the detail. I do all my design work in Illustrator. Well, most of it. Sometimes I create a background in Photoshop if there's techniques involved that I can't do in Illustrator that I don't know how to do because there's so much that I have let yet to learn. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this design and we're going to paste that onto the back of the shirt that we're doing, the mock-up shirt that we're doing in Adobe Photoshop. So for our back, just get these layers. And we're going to grab that back layer. Okay. So as I mentioned, I designed custom sportswear. This is a pool league shirt that I designed a while back. 
uh, we're going to apply that to the back of this t-shirt that we're doing the mock-up so I'm just going to select my back layer here um, I'm just going to go in and get my snipping tool snipping tool I'm going to clear these guides view and guides clear guides okay so we're just going to grab this we're just going to we're just going to grab this background for this back of this pool league shirt and we're going to apply it to our mock-up so with my snipping tool i'm just going to say new and we're just going to grab this back of this shirt so when you get that snipped out just hit edit copy now we're going to go back into photoshop and i'm going to go to the back smart object double click and you can see that this is what it looks like so that's the area that this got to cover what i'm pasting on here Control v so you can see that it's a little bit small but that's not a big deal we can stretch that so you hit control T um, we got proportionate turned off let's turn it on so now we don't have to hit our shift key or anything to get it to do it the way we want okay so when you got that stretched to the top and to the bottom just make sure it's lined up pretty much in the center here we might have to come back to this and change it a little bit to make it fit the back of the shirt so it looks a little blurry there now but once you apply the transformation it should be fine okay there you go okay so now all we have to do is save this layer so I just hit control s now you see it's still saving okay we go back into our mock-up and this got that uh, image applied to the back of the shirt so for the collar let's just double click on that we're just going to cut color that black so just double click on collar so we want to hit control a to get whatever's in there by hitting your delete key and we're just going to give it a black color with your flood fill just fill her in black okay hit control d Control S and go back into your mock-up and your collar is now black you can see there's a gap here between the design and the collar so what we got to do with this is we got to do a warp transformation so we're going to remove this link so that when you warp the image it doesn't also warp the mask so to do this just click on your image image thumbnail not your mask thumbnail hit control T and you might be able to just drag this up a little bit yeah there you go perfect uh, it looks a little off center to me so we can drag that over but as we're dragging you can see that the sleeves are not covering the area that they should be covering so in order to fix that we got to do a warp transformation so while we're still in transformation mode there's like an X going across this image right here is your warp tool so you just click on that now that gives you little handles that you can adjust different areas of the image independently from the others so you can see that it's perfect down along here it's a little bit short in the bottom so we're just going to drag that down here with our little warp handles and you can move them back and forth and give it a little warp after all a garment on a body is not perfectly symmetrical okay so main thing we want to worry about is this uh, little gap we got here in our image and the area that it should be covering so we're just going to grab the top right hand corner and just give it a little tug so you can see that it stretched out that side to the top of the shoulder but this didn't move so you're just going to take this little handle give that another little tug now you can move it up or down or just haul that out there like that okay we're going to do the same here we're going to grab the top left hand handle give it a little 
little bit of a tug here. Okay. Now we're going to hit our check mark here to apply the transformation. We're going to zoom out. So all we got left to do now is add the sleeve design. So let's go back into the Illustrator and get our sleeves. <clears throat> So this is what sleeves look like. So let's just um, grab our right sleeve. They're both the same, so it doesn't matter. Just grab the right sleeve. Control C. And we're going to go back into Photoshop. We're going to double click on our... Oh, looks like my computer's frozen a little bit. Okay, we're going to go right sleeve first. So here's the original sleeve. We're just going to hit Control V and it's going to give you uh, some choices here. You just want to select pixels. So now you can see you got to stretch this bugger out a little bit too. So let's just drag it. Wow, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. It's going to be easier. Control minus to zoom out. And just grab your hand line side here. Keep going, 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 going. And still not there. Huh. Another little bit. Okay. The little bit at the top shouldn't matter. Give us a little bit of blank space here. So now we're going to hit our check mark, add our, our control to apply our um, transform, apply our transformation. <laughs> so now we're going to hit control S and we're going to go back to our mockup. You see that looks a little wonky. So just take off your link button here, hit control T. We want this on a little bit of an angle. Sleeves are a little tricky to do. As you can see, the top here is actually not big enough. So just stretch it out a little bit more, give it a little bit of a twist. hit control enter. This is probably not the best example to show you the mock up but it, when I get the next steps done it shouldn't uh, shouldn't look that bad it should look pretty good actually. Let's go in here um, let's go back in here now we can use the exact same image for the other side so let's just get our right sleeve image hit control A shift control or sorry control C and go back to our mockup file. Now we want to double click on the left smart object for the left sleeve. Hit control V. This needs to be dragged out. I'm not sure why the other one was so small. Must be some way I when I designed it. Okay. Hit save. Go back into your mockup file. And again you want to Unlink it from the mask and give it a little little twist here. And probably slide it down a little bit. And now we're gonna move the other one as well. Whoops. Hit control T. And there you go. Now it still looks pretty flat. Actually this needs a little warp applied to it for the left sleeve. It's not covering the entire area. So just hit Control T, go into your warp tool, and we'll just give it a little warp here. There. Okay, 
so as I was saying let's zoom her in a little bit here still looks a bit flat it just looks like a piece of cardboard so to remedy that remember we saved these two images down bottom here so this one and this one layer one copy we're going to double click and we're going to call it ADJ1 for adjustment one and this is going to be a D whoops A D J two for adjustment two. We're gonna take the lock off of these. We're gonna highlight them, click one, then hit your control key and click the other. Then you're gonna hit control G and that'll put it into a group. We're gonna call it group adjustments. And we're gonna slide that right up to the top. And now it's covering everything. So open up your group. The first adjustment layer, you're going to change the blend mode on that to uh, linear burn. And your next one, you're going to change the adjustment, uh, sorry, the blend mode to screen. Now you can see, you can see, you may or may not see, you can barely see the design through this. So what we got to do with this, for adjustment two, we got to add an adjustment layer. And that adjustment layer is going to be levels. So with an adjustment layer, you want to up the black output for the uh, screen mode design. Can't really see the effects of it yet because the other one's still up over it. If we turn that off, you can't really tell there either. But what we got to do with this right here, we just want it. We just want this uh, adjustment for levels to apply to the layer directly below the adjustment layer, which is this here. So to do that, you just go back into your adjustment, and there's this little arrow, down arrow here. You want to click on that and that's what indicates that it only applies to the layer directly below it. So we leave that as is for now. We're going to go to adjustment one, which is your linear burn layer. We're going to add an adjustment layer, levels. Now on the linear burn one, we want to up the white output a little bit. Now these are some things that you're going to have to play with. Oh, I need to sing that one down as well. I got some values written down here from the previous version that I did. I'm just going to try those. So this is our linear burn layer. We're going to put these numbers in. For this one, we got 129, 036, whoops, 0 0.36, 255, which is already there. Output level 74. So you can see it's starting to come to life. And 188. Okay, so we want to play around with that a little bit. It's a little tricky because you get two layers to play with there. So you can see that you can kind of see some of the shadows and stuff through through the uh, design layers. And that's where this is so tricky because you got to get just the right balance. 
Okay, let's go back up into our adjustment layer for our linear burn and play around with that to see what looks better. Okay, so now you can see it's got a little bit more texture to it and got you can see some actual wrinkles in the shirt. Now we can go back into our other one. We can go back on fourth all night if you like, but you're only going to get it so good. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. 